Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to be doing block nine, his and hers, of the murder mystery at the Luau. And the story is actually called His and Hers. And I'm going to show you the fabrics I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you the paper piecing cutouts. There's my pieces that I've got all cut out. Here's all the different kind of fabric colors that I'm going to have so to this use. This paper here. It's not the typing paper because what I do is I go ahead, I print out my pattern, then I turn around and I print out only the paper piecing on the translucent vellum paper. This is foundation paper. This is the paperwork I'm going to show you here. So that's what it's called. Let me get rid of that glare. And this is what I buy. I have used a bunch of different types of paper for paper piecing. This is the easiest to tear away. This would be the only other thing that I would use. And the reason is, once it got wet, it literally disintegrates. So there's no peeling off the paper. And it comes in notebook paper now. Let me pull out a sheet here. And here's the back. It's the back is shiny like your wax paper is. The front part of it has got a rough texture to it. Now, if you've never done paper piecing before and you're just tuning in, these are some of the supplies you're going to need. You need your rotary cutter because we're going to need to trim it down when we're finished. If you like, you can use a fabric glue stick to begin with, or you can use Elmer's glue, anything you want, and I'll. I don't normally do it, but I'm going to show you, uh, only because I've done it enough times, I don't need to do it, but I'll show you how to use it. This is called, you, I don't know if you can read it here, it's at a quarter plus. And this has a raised lip on it here. Let's see if you can see it there. So that your fabric, when you get them together and you put this up against it, it nestles. And this is your quarter inch and then you just stick it up against your fabric and cut and I'll show you how to do that and I just have another little ruler here and then I have all my pieces of paper here so the very first thing that you're gonna do and we're gonna go with a really simple one it has three and this is what you're looking at this is the very first square that you're going to be sewing it says D1 that's representing the first one then you will sew your second fabric to this and the third to that. The bigger numbers is the color or the marked color of your fabric you're using. So my BG1 is this blue fabric here. And so that's what I'm going to use whenever it says BG1. So I'll have a blue here in this little triangle. I'll have a blue here. And this, the FF2D, is this pink color here. Now you want to have enough fabric that it goes over the entire spot. If you're in doubt, make it a little bit bigger because if you make it exact, you may end up with it being too short and you won't know that till you've gone and trimmed it. That has happened to me a few times. Now normally what you do is you would take this fabric and you're going to look at it right side up. You're going to go to the wrong side of your paper because you're sewing on the right side, you're putting your fabric on the wrong side. But we already know that our fabric should be facing up because we want to see the fabric facing us. Putting the wrong side of the paper to the wrong side of the fabric. That is only for the very first square, rectangle, wherever you're doing it. And normally, you would take your glue and you would put it right on that spot or on your fabric. And then you take it and you lay it on there like this and it sticks for you because you're going to flip this over in order to sew it. And what you're going to sew is on this line and you're going to be sewing two to one. Well, to get one to stay there so that it doesn't move, that's where that glue comes in. But this is so small you don't need the glue. But I'll show you another glue I use. So this is Roxanne Glue Base and it's strictly temporary. It goes away once you've washed your fabric and everything. Well, as a matter of fact, as soon as you pull out the paper, it goes away. I normally put this on the paper, not on the fabric. But you can do either one. The next one, and this is the stuff that 
actually it dries really really fi fast and I believe the name is Aline's it's original tacky glue but anyway like I said what you would do and I'm gonna do it for an example on this one here so you just take your glue and your piece of paper here and just put your little dot on it so I can get my glue to come out there we go that's it you take your fabric now remember wrong side of the fabric to the wrong side of the paper put it on there that's it because we're going to actually sew on this side now I'm going to go ahead and pick out my number two fabric which is the pink and now what you do is you're going to take the pink fabric and you want the right size together because when you sew them right sides together and you fold it over that's what you're gonna see which is what you want to see the right sides of your fabric so you look at the number two and then what you're doing is although the fabrics gonna cover this area you want to put the fabric to the left because you're gonna flip it over so we're gonna put the fabric when we flip it over the fabric goes on this side so we're gonna go like this wrong sides I mean excuse me right sides together turn it over like that when you sew on that line and you can tell even in here you can tell how it's hanging off here and see this right here this line you want to make sure you've got a little bit of extra to the right because that's your seam I'm gonna stick a little pin in there to show you let's pretend you that you sewed right Ooh, that's a little bitty pin isn't it let's pretend that you sewed right here on this line which is what we're gonna do let me get it up here so you can see it make sure it comes through the... okay so this is the line you're gonna sew on and when you get done sewing it you'll sew it on this side I mean, you'll sew it on this side, you'll flip it over, you'll turn it like this to press it down. And then what it's had to do is cover all of this. Now notice, it didn't cover it. See how the bottom's exposed? That means that paper's laying wrong. I mean, this fabric's laying wrong, excuse me. So then I'm going to take it out because I know that's wrong. And all I did was show you for an example. So my fabric needs to be long ways. So let's put it like this. And I'm looking at it because what I'm doing is I'm still looking to see that it's coming off here. So now let's, I'm going to pin it again. I'm just doing this to show you. I'm going to pin it again. Put the pins in the same spot. This paper's not going to tear. It's not that weak. Now if I sewed right there, I flip my fabric over. It still hasn't made it. So I need to turn my fabric upside down. Apparently the bigger, whoops. The bigger part of my fabric needs to be at the bottom. So right sides together again. I can see where it's hanging off. I'm going to come down a little bit. I'm going to put my pin in. Okay, I'm going to have sewed on this end. I'm going to open it up, flip it over, press it, and now I can see it covered everywhere it needed to be. This is where you're going to be cutting it on the dotted line. See the dotted line? You're going to cut that, but you want your fabric to go all the way out here. This is your seam line when you put this piece of fabric which you'll have three pieces sewn it'll be a section and you'll connect it to another section which it'll show in our directions and then now you're going to sew on this seam so that this is your quarter inch seam allowance but you still want the fabric in there you don't want your fabric too short because your seam allowance is a quarter inch so what we'll do is we'll go ahead I'll take my pin out and we'll sew this now if you want to put a pin in you can it's not going to hurt to put a pin in your paper just like that we're going to sew it on this line right here and actually that'll be in the way of my foot so let me turn it upside down I still got my hand on it's not going anywhere I'm going to be sewing on this line so I can actually pin my fabric right out here my fabric's not going anywhere and then I can sew it 
right down this little beady line right here. All right, let's do that. I hope this isn't too confusing for you guys. I'm trying to cover all my bases here, trying to show you how you might think you have it penned right, but then you end up not having it just before you've sewn it, so you don't get frustrated by constantly having to take it out and put it in and take it out. I mean, I've sat and done that when I get tired. Do this again. And remember now we're sewing on this line right here. This is between one and two. You can either turn it this way and sew it, or this way, it doesn't make a difference. Now I'm using a 12 needle. I'm using white thread on this project. You can use cream if you want to. A lot of people use cream. But I am taking my stitch and I'm lowering it because I wanna be able to tear it away from the paper and my stitch has not come off. So I'm gonna actually go down to a 1.2. You can go to a one, you can go as teeny weeny as your sewing machine will let you go. The low, the smaller the stitches, the easier to rip the paper and your stitch will not come out. And it's just a straight stitch. Make sure I have white in my bobbin. I've been doing, yes. My bobbin should last a couple blocks but I do have a little indicator, so it'll tell me if my bobbin's out. It'll actually make a noise. You do not need to back up, nor do you need to move forward to do this. I'm gonna put my foot lift here, and I can do it one more time. There you go, now I can cut it. Now let's take the pin off. I'm gonna flip it upside down. I'm going to smooth it. And just use your hands. There's what the seam looks like. We're gonna flip it over and it covered everything. See? Now the next seam line is this one right here. And it gets the BG1, which is the blue fabric again. This is where you cut it before you go on. And this is what we're gonna do here. I've smoothed it out. Let me cut this little piece off here. This is where we're going to be sewing it the next time. So you take your piece of paper, you fold it over on the line that you're going to be sewing on. And what you want is you want all this excess fabric from one and two off before you put three on. Here's where we use our quarter inch ruler. I'm going to do the back half with the quarter inch ruler and then I'm going to show you if you do not have a quarter inch ruler how to do it. So I've got it, it's snugged up against here, it's not going anywhere. And you take it and it cuts it like that which is a quarter inch. But let's say you don't have a quarter inch ruler. Let's say you have a regular ruler. Alright, let me not, uh, alright let me show you the difference between these two rulers. Alright, the pink ruler has a half inch already marked. It does not have a quarter inch. This is Cotton Cuts ruler. Cute Cuts, excuse me. The Creative Grids has a quarter inch marked and a half inch marked. A quarter inch marked and a half inch marked. And I'm trying to find a regular ruler. And here's an Omni Grid ruler which has nothing marked. Now, on this ruler, this yellow line is my quarter inch. They have it all the way down the ruler. So let's say this is the kind of ruler you have. It doesn't have a mark. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler, let me get a little closer for you. You would take your ruler, you lay your quarter inch line right on that edge of that fabric, you would take your blade, and slowly cut across. And there's your quarter inch. So when you get ready to sew that next piece of fabric on, it's already gonna have the quarter inch. So now we're gonna take this blue and it has to cover this entire spot right here, which we know that this piece will work because it'll cover that. So what we wanna do is we wanna flip it on this side we want to make sure it covers it. So the biggest part is here at the top, like that. This is the right side, so we're going to put our right sides together. And if we want it to look like this, then we need to flip it like this. 
and then we're going to flip it like that so we can see it because that's our quarter inch that's a little bit more than a quarter inch on both sides here and it covered that whole piece of paper so we know that this is correct this is where you either pin it or you hold it if you want to pin it that's fine I don't need to pin it out let me make sure you can see it see how I've just got it matched up here because that's my quarter seam so I just put it right up against there let me back you up a minute and then all I have to do is flip it upside down take it over there and sew it if you want to pin it that's fine you can pin it you can pin it right here on this side of the fabric I'll show you just take your pin go like this it's pinned on there. Now, when I take it over here to the sewing machine, I'm not going to bump it. I'm not going to move it. It's not going to come disconnected or anything else so that I've got a boo-boo when I get over there. So let's go over here, and we're going to sew this line right here on the spot. Put it down, and I'm just going to slowly sew across that line. I can come one more time. Now we'll take this pin off of there. And there we go. Now if you have a little wooden iron, which I have over here, you can use it to smooth it down. Keep in mind that when you go to iron it, you do not want to use water. Especially if you're using that other kind of paper I was telling you about, that salvy, because that would just literally disappear on you. But this, the paper would get wet and start crumbling on you. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll trim this block, and I'll show you over here how to trim it, because you don't want all this excess like on it. Like I said, it. if you want to iron it, by all means, go ahead and iron it before you do this part. I'll use my regular ruler here. And now I'm going to go on my quarter inch line out here. See, it's a quarter from there to there. I'm just straightening it out. Just like if you were squaring it up. got some weird little angles down here there's two different ones and we have to make those I didn't get quite close enough to my line let me go a little closer here and we have to do those because the other pieces that match up will have those same lines and there you go that's one block here's the next one we're gonna do there's only two pieces in here and this is C this is our number one line. And our first color is FF2. I don't think that would be pushing it to use that size. So we're not going to use it. If you're the kind of person that spray starches, by all means, go ahead and do it now with your fabric before you start up putting it together. All right, so we only need a little piece of that. Remember now, this is right sides up. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut this off right here. That should be big enough for that one. And we're putting it right side up, which is this side, you can tell. And remember, we're going to be sewing on this side. So the fabric has to be on the other side. And this is the first time that your wrong sides go together because the fabric needs to be facing up towards you. A little dot right there. And then we're going to put our fabric on top of it, facing up. We want to be able to see it. And now we know we're going to sew on this line here. So this fabric here has to cover that. Now you can go ahead and put your quarter inch, but I don't do anything until after this has been sewn. So let's flip it over. And yes, this is too big, but we can still do it. And keep in mind, we want the fabric to look like this when it's done. We need to turn it over here because we're going to flip it over when it's finished. So we're putting our right sides together. We can pin it if we want. I'm going to turn it upside down. Keep it right lined up with that. 
and then I'm going to pin it. And we already know, actually, since this is our line, now we can take our fabric and actually go like this because it's going to go, we want our quarter inch. Here's the line. We're looking the distance between this and this, that and that. So you can turn it like this. And I'm going to go ahead and pin on this side of the fabric. So it's gotten both of my fabrics. We've got one and two, and I'm going to sew on this line. I'm going to go on this side, and I won't have to worry about that pin hitting that foot right there. Because you can go on either side. Go down. And then just slowly stitch. Looks like I need two more stitches. There we go. Now all we're doing is we're trimming around this block right here. I'm just trimming off the excess. You can always trim it a little bit too big, just don't trim it too small, because you can't get it back once you've done that. Let's make sure I'm in the camera here. This has got those little sides like that other one had. It's kind of weird shaped. And now, since this only had two pieces on it, we can go ahead and trim our quarter inch, since it only has two. Go like that. This is what I'm doing. I'm taking this little ruler here, putting on my quarter inch, right there, and trim it. So let's pick another one. Now this has got a lot in it. So the first piece is right here, and it's FF2 which is this pink right here. So we'll start with it. And since this is so big and that's so small, we're gonna cut us a little piece off about this big. Doesn't need to be measured or anything, just like that. And remember, we're going to the wrong side to start out with. And we're gonna have the fabric facing the wrong side to the wrong side of the paper. Here we go. Wrong sides together, put our square down. Just gonna sew on this line right here. So we want our number two fabric, which is this here, FF3. That'll fit on that. And this, this is the second one, and that's the third one. So that's FF2, which is the pink. And that should work for that. So these two are the next two pieces. So we're gonna, this line here, and we're going to put right sides together. This is the line we're sewing on right here. So we can go down a little bit more on our paper. Let's see here. We can go that far down with it. I'm just going to take it over here and we're going to sew it. Now while I'm putting this together, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the story. It's not very long today. Kitty couldn't sleep last night, so she got up early and she went looking for Marcus. He is the husband of the lady who has been murdered. And he found her, she found him, excuse me. And he was sitting in his office. And when she walked in, he said that his wife had been hit in the head with a coconut. And that's what had killed her. And Kitty goes, I don't understand what you're talking about. And he goes, well, didn't the coroner call you? And he, she said, no, nobody called me. And he said, well, it's a shame that the light of my, the love of my life, or the light, the light in my life passed away by being hit in the head with a coconut. And she said, I don't follow. What do you mean she was hit in the head with a coconut? And she said, that's what I was told. And she says, well, 
what exactly were you told? And he said, well, it was blunt force trauma to the head by a coconut. And she goes, well, that may have been what hit her in the head, but it was murder. If she had just got hit in the head, the ambulance would have come and people would have helped her and all that. She wouldn't have ended up in the bottom of a pit. And so she said, I'm letting you know that your wife was murdered and I'm going to find the murderer. And so he said, please do for me and for you. And she goes, I will. And that's the gist of that whole entire chapter. I mean, it had a lot of background stuff, but y'all don't need to know about that. We're going to get our quarter inch, so we're going to go between our second and our third. This is one, two, this is three. As you see, D3. So we're going to fold on our line. And we're folding on the line that we're going to sew on. This is where you got to be careful and not come over too far with your stitching because if you go beyond the stitch, you'll be into the next line and then you won't be able to fold your paper back. So I'm doing the quarter inch. Taking that off. That's the way these look. Now we're going to get the third piece, which is this. We want to make sure it covers the whole entire thing. So we turn it over. We're going to put our right sides together. And if I lay, this is the piece right here. So if I lay it like this and I flip it over, it covers the whole entire area, including the line here. You need to cover all of this. Now keep in mind, not just this area, but you need all of this. This is included. This is your seam allowance. So we can move it over to the right a little bit and go like that and it will cover it. So you can actually put this right on that quarter inch line. And hold on to it, flip it over, and I'm gonna take it over here. And if you want, you can pin it if it's easier for you. I'm just gonna take it over and sew it. I'm gonna go right down to, this is the fifth piece we put on, but we do not want to sew into that piece. So I gotta be real careful. And I got one more. That's it. Now we're gonna trim this one. And yes, it fit over the entire piece. Just finger press it or use your little wooden iron if you got one of those. Now you look for your next sewing line and that is number four over here. And we're going to Look at this piece, see how little that is? That's a FF3. Then back the next sewing line. And I'm gonna trim some of this off because it's just a lot of excess here. Alrighty. We're gonna sew on that line. We need a little teeny weeny piece here in the corner. Which I can get away with a piece about this big, so. That'll cover that whole area. If I was to take it and sew it there and flip it over, it would cover all of that. There's our block right there. So we wanna make sure we come back on it far enough, or excuse me, a board far enough, and then we will take it over there. Remember, right sides together now. And if you have an open-toed foot and you'd like to use that so that for, like I'm lifting this foot up to look underneath there each time, you can use your open-toed foot. I mean, you're only following the line. It's not like you're looking at a quarter inch. We'll fold this back. All right, and get our next piece. Our number five is right here. This is our sewing line. This is gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim off all this excess. We're going to put FF3, which is this color here. It's just a smidgen right there. So we'll move over to the left a little bit. And we'll go ahead and we'll sew this. We're 
gonna sew on this one next, which is six. So we're going to bend our paper over. We're gonna take all the quarter inch off of here. And since this number five is this fabric, we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll this over and we're going to do a quarter inch here and get ready for the next one. So this is all excess of fabric that we don't need on here. Okay. Next one we're going to work on is this piece right here, which is FF3, which is this color again. So we can put it on there. We put it here and we sew it on and flip it over. It will cover all of that. So we're going to do that. So it looks like all we have is number seven left. So we can cut off this excess over here. And then we're gonna, we've already folded it back once, but we're gonna fold it back again to get this off. Cause that just got added on, remember? We just did this one. And then all we got is this piece right here. And it is the same color as number D6, D7, FF3. So it's the same fabric. Now this one, that would really be pushing it because, let's see here. Actually, mm, I think it's going to be pushing it to do it. Yeah, let's not do that because that's not going to be enough. So I need a bigger piece. All right, here's a piece that's big enough. I will lay it on that. And we'll go ahead and we will sew that. And here's the last one that needs to be added. Now we don't take any of these papers off until we've connected all of these pieces. trim up our block and if you want to use your rotary your revolving rotor mat rotary mat that's good here too Iron it. Now show pieces we've done together. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of them, and then I will show them to you when I get ready to put them all together. And what I'm doing is, when I get them ironed, I'm going to lay them underneath the book. That's why these two are a little bit flatter than this one. See how it's curled up? That's what happens when you iron it. So I'll lay them underneath the book here to weigh it down. When they're all sewn, they'll look like this, and then you place them together based on the picture. And that's what I've done here. It ends up being four different blocks when you sew them together. And I'll show you how I pin one of them. So here's what I do, and I'm gonna show you on this first block. I take, and I lay them like this, because, excuse me, like this, right sides together. And so I will put a pin in this corner here, right here. And then I'm matching this corner here. 
which I can actually see through this fabric like that because these two they are like that these two seams right here are going to meet up so I put it like that it's not going anywhere then I take another pin while I've got these stuck like this because they're together and then I'll try and go down like right about here put another pin in and then go like that so they're like that together and then I will go upward like this which will hold that and then I'll do the same thing here I'll just pin it like this I'll pin this whole side before I get started here's what it looked like I went ahead and I pinned it here at the bottom two places and then up here I just moved this pin from the top down and I'll start right there and go straight down the seam to the end of it and then that one will be done and then when you open it it'll be like that then just like any other time right before I approach my pin I will take it out now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm keep my stitches little actually I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll increase my stitches up to two because this is the actual seam so and you can go up to 2.5 if you want I don't think any of these seams are matching I mean any of these um, edges I don't think I don't think there's anything that, to match usually they're not when you're paper piecing here and one more and that's what that looks like when it gets done and that's the very first block so I wanted to show you that when I did this first piece I don't know how it happened but by the time I got done doing it and I was close to the tail end I realized my B1 which is this block right here with the yellow it wasn't long enough so all I did since I'd already put the rest of it together I went back and I just sewed this right here I laid it and sewed it across and that was it so that it would be longer because otherwise if you note that was my very first one that was short and I didn't even realize it till I was just going along so just to make it longer so that's why the seam allowance is more than a quarter inch which you can see right here which doesn't have a problem now I'll take this and instead of going to the right or the left I will go ahead and I will do it uh, I'll iron it open but I don't take any of this paper off until we're totally finished and I won't even iron these right now I'm just gonna leave them just like they are and I will put a book on them to keep them pressed open so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put them all together they all get together the same way your um, directions show you let me get my directions here so for example I just did this one here I took that and I attached it to that now the second or the next segment which is units one through three it has three pieces that get put together this is the second one you can see the FF1 and the F2 FF1, F2, that's where that paper is. The directions say to attach these two pieces together, and then when I'm done, to attach this one to that. So I'll do it the same way. I'll start on the corners here, put the seam down, and then I'll do the corner there and the corner there on the other one. Well, here's all four of them finished. And like I said, I'll put them on a book so they can flatten out with the other ones over here. So I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.